Hello everyone. After having studied resonance, we have to go for aromaticity. Aromaticity is the immediate consequence of resonance. It's a very important application of resonance. And aromaticity is one of the biggest factor in organic chemistry. In fact, it is the strongest factor in organic chemistry. We are uh, about to study aromaticity. What aromaticity is, it brings about lots of stability. We'll look into the reason why it brings about lots of stability. But before that, we have to learn basically uh, what is aromaticity. And uh, given a compound, how would I identify whether that molecule is aromatic? First of all, I'll give you the formal definition of aromatic molecule. Now, in aromatic molecules are... Uh, First of all, cyclic molecules. Aromaticity is a cyclic phenomena. We don't look for aromaticity in acyclic compounds. First, the thing is that this is the prerequisite that the molecule has to be uh, cyclic. And after having been cyclic, the molecule must have cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron. Cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron means suppose it means suppose I, suppose I have uh, suppose I have a cyclic compound. And uh, in the cyclic compound, there's an there's ongoing resonance in certain region. Suppose resonance is happening in only this much region, then this is not cyclic uninterrupted delocalization because across this carbon, the resonance has interrupted, and this is not complete delocalization in the cyclic molecule. In this case, the molecule is not is not aromatic. A molecule is aromatic when there is cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization. That means electrons are revolving all around the molecule cyclically without stopping at any carbon. If this is the case, the molecule is aromatic. Now looking at the molecule, there has to be certain conditions for which this, con this situation will be there. So the condition is, the, there are two conditions basically. The molecule has to be planar and uh, there are only two hybridization in which we have planar geometry. One is sp hybridization when you have linear and linear structure is obviously planar. And But the problem is we don't have sp hybridization in cyclic ring because in sp hybridization the bond angle is 180 degree. And in ring the, the bond angle can't be 180 degree. There has to be some angle, there has to be some angle whatever it is, 180 degree or 120 degree because the bonds will be curved. So uh, to complete the ring, it can't be straight. So 180 degree is not possible. And if a carbon is at sp hybridization state in a ring, it will be in a very high angle strain. So sp hybridization is does not exist in a cyclic ring, and um, below below eight member or nine member or ten members. So sp hybridization do exist, but it has to be a large member ring. In smaller rings, sp hybridization does not exist. So molecule can't be planar because of sp hybridization. The other hybridization in which the, the geometry is planar is sp2 hybridization, in which the geometry is, is um, trigonal planar. If we go for sp3, this is tetrahedral. If we go for higher hybridization, we don't have planar geometries. The only geometry planar that can exist in a cyclic ring is sp2 hybridization. So the point number two is the molecule has to be planar. The molecule has to be planar. This is the first criteria. And if the molecule has to be planar, then technically it has to be sp2 hybridized. So the first thing that you have to look at any molecule is whether all the atoms are sp2 hybridized or not. If the all atoms are not sp2 hybridized, that means molecule is not planar. And if it is not planar, it cannot be aromatic. We'll see this. We'll see everything. But uh, the first condition that we have to look for is for aromaticity is planarity. And the molecule is planar only when all the atoms are sp2 hybridized. This is the first criteria. The next criteria is, apart from being planar, it also must satisfy Huckel rule. Huckel was a scientist. He just gave a rule. And that rule is the molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons. 4n plus 2, uh, where n is n would be a whole number, it, n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever. Pi electrons, as we have seen before, are those electrons which can participate in resonance. So lone pair, negative charge, and the electron in pi bond. All kinds of electrons are pi electrons. So apart from being planar, the molecule must satisfy Huckel rule. That means the molecule must have 4n plus 2 pi electron in the ring. That's about aromaticity. If any molecule satisfy these two criteria then the molecule will have cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron. Now, this, this, this definition, th this, 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 this thing is sufficient to say if a molecule has cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron, then the molecule will be aromatic. 
basically if we have to visualize the aromaticity we have to visualize this that there's a ring and in that ring there's an ongoing complete uninterrupted cyclic delocalization of electron if this thing happens then there is aromaticity basically aromaticity is this now this thing to if th this thing to happen now look electrons are evolving electrons are moving from one atom to another and that thing is possible only when all the atoms have one p orbital in which the electron can enter and can exit if all the atom offers one p electron that means if all the carbon atom is holding one p electron in which the electrons can enter and can come out then only this thing can happen that all the then then only you can have cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization so for that thing to happen first of all molecule has to be planar because if molecules are not planar then the p orbitals will not be parallel to each other and we have seen before that for any electronic transition orbitals has to be parallel whether it is hyperconjugation or resonance or any other electronic transition molecules must be parallel to each other so that parallelity that that's parallelity will be satisfied only when the molecule is planar the next thing is uh, apart from being planar it must also have 4n plus 2 pi electrons now what is this magic why this is a magic number why it is 4n plus 2 and not 4n plus 3 or 4n we'll see this after we study everything at the end now if molecule satisfies these two conditions molecule is planar and molecule satisfy huckel rule then the molecule will be aromatic now for planarity you must have sp2 hybridization and apart from having sp2 hybridization you must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons now there's another category of compounds they are called anti aromatic now anti aromaticity brings about hell lot of instability anti aromatic is really anti to aromatic aromatic are very very stable compounds aromaticity brings about lots of stability this anti aromaticity this anti aromaticity brings about lots of instability but the first criteria is exactly the same this cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron same as aromat same as aromatic compounds that means suppose suppose we uh, in anti aromaticity we also will be having the same thing that means in a cyclic compound there will be ongoing cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization of electron the same thing happens in aromaticity as well but the only point where they differ is for aromaticity you require 4n pi electron for anti aromaticity you require 4n plus 2 pi electron i'm sorry for aromaticity we require 4n plus 2 pi electron and for anti aromaticity we require 4n pi electron here they differ and this small difference brings about very high stability and very high instability now why it's happening so it comes from molecular orbital theory and we'll we'll have a little glimpse over this at the end of this topic why this is happening but for now you have to take it as it is on the face of it if you have 4n plus 2 pi electron it brings about stability if you have 4n pi electron it brings about instability and the third category if a molecule is neither aromatic nor anti aromatic then that will be non aromatic and non aromatic compounds are those which which do not have cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization if you have cyclic uninterrupted complete delocalization then either it will be aromatic or it will be anti aromatic non aromatic compounds does not have cyclic uninterrupted delocalization that means it has interrupted delocalization that means suppose you have a cyclic ring like this and the resonance will be happening only a part of that ring it will not be happening in the whole of the rings suppose this this atom this atom does not have a p orbital that means suppose this is sp3 hybridized if this is sp3 hybridized that means carbon had four orbitals 1s and 3p and all of them went for hybridization that means we don't have a pure p orbital now now there's no orbital in which that electrons can go in and come out that means this atom which is having sp3 hybridization is hindering resonance is stopping resonance so electrons cannot bypass that atom so there cannot be cyclic uninterrupted delocalization rather there will be interrupted delocalization and when that is the case the molecule is called non aromatic and there is no fixed condition for this what what is the number of electrons the molecule have can have any number of electrons so Uh, any cyclic compound will fall in one of these three categories either it has to be aromatic or it has to be anti aromatic or it has to be non aromatic 
Now we'll have a regress problem solving session now and we'll solve hell lot of problem and we'll see and we'll learn to identify to, uh, when we look at a compound how we would identify whether that is aromatic or anti-aromatic or non-aromatic.